All righty, righty, righty. We're back, we're back, we're back. We're having the Friday night party. Party on a Friday. Chess party on a Friday. There's so much action going on. It's not even, it's just, it's not, it doesn't even make sense how chess is just booming right now. Booming. It's incredible. We're loving it. We're totally loving it. And so, did anybody guess? Let's see. I got names. I got names. I got Bavinik up in here. Beethoven. Hmm. Funny. Borgov. Oh, you've been watching too much Queen's Gambit. Benoni. Uh, no. Blackburn. More about Vinic. Whoa. Somebody guessed it. Kudos. Kudos. Let me see if anybody else got it before I give it up. No, it was not Bobby. It was not Benko. Botez. I said way back, right? Robert Byrne. Not a bad guess. Indeed. Oh, I see a second person got it. A second person got it. Benny, again, too much, too much Queen's Gambit for sure. Okay, relative impact, ding, 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 you win a prize, but I think it was Prophylaxis who got it first, so give it up for, for both of you for finding gangster David Bronstein. David Bronstein, yeah, one of the most creative players in all of chess history almost became world champion but Vinick was like oh my god i survived and then match the score was 12 12 and but Vinick kept the title and it was a oh, right at the end heart attack a heart attack <laughs> yo this guy could have beaten them and give me that title david bronstein got it done back in the day but couldn't get through and beat by Vinick. ended up only tying that match and not getting another chance to play in a match for the world championship title. Bronstein was was a nut job, a nut job. And I saw an article on him recently on chess.com. Somebody put an article together and they showed some games. I was like, yeah, Bronstein, Zurich, 1953, one of the greatest books ever written in chess history. One of the greatest books ever written, just a classic. And some of the games he played, Zeta Bronstein is one game. If you haven't seen it, you got to look at it. It's spectacular. And like, I mean, he's got games that are so popular. I'm, I'm not going into those games. I'm going to the less popular games. I just got to show y'all. But Zeta, Z-I-T-A, Bronstein. Mm, just saying it makes me happy. They just sack him and sack him and whack him and drop the knight in there. Boom! Dark square domination. Beautiful game. Beautiful, beautiful game. Remember, Zurich 1953. You're saying, what was the book? Zurich 1953. David Bronstein. I see people still showing some love for MVL versus Naka for tomorrow. It's going to be on. Yes, we did talk about it earlier. But Zur Z Zurich 1953, written by David Bronstein. That book is awesome. I can, you know, I've already listed some books that I like. I mentioned Jeremy Silman's book, How to Reassess Your Chess. That's another one that I really like for those of you who want to get better. But anyway, let's start with the first game. We're going to do this one. He played against Brian Kelly. And let's take a look real quick through the opening of this game. A little E4, C5, Knight of 3, E6 action. And here, Bronstein was very creative. Very creative. He never really wanted to be on the beaten path. He always went off the beaten path. Anybody, you're walking over here. The crowd's here. He wanted to be over there. So he always came up with some creative ideas in the opening. Queen E2. Didn't want to play a standard Sicilian with D4, etc. Whatever. He wants to play a King's Indian attack. And that's what we're going to see in this game. G3. Fisher, I can say, who was a connoisseur of the King's Indian attack, probably saw a game like this and was like, oh, I like that way of playing. Let me do that. <laughs> Let me do that and beat on some people. And Fisher used to win games similar to this one, by the way. So Bishop G2. You get your little friend set up. Now, because the queen is on E2, black can trade and then try to trade queens because the queen is off the square. That's a key moment. Key important point for us to remember about this position. So now castles, and we're just going to go forward. E5, key move in this opening. E5, getting some space. And now C4, it looks like you're weakening a square, but you're not. Your knight's got that covered. You're not worried about it. You just want to make sure black's pawn formation is a little bit stuck. D4. Once white sees this, white's happy. White's just happy. Thank you very much. The pawn formation is now fixed. You know, B6 and bishop B7 makes a lot of sense in the position. But to play D4 now, white's like, me like, me like. 
Let me do it. H4. I'm going to do him dirty. H4 controlling this critical. I missed the G5 square completely. <laughs> controlling this critical G5 square. Now A6 looking for a break. No problem. Looking for the B5 break. White doesn't care about that. White has one thing on his mind. is this maneuver. This is a very important maneuver in the King's Indian attack. One point is to get the knight to the really powerful g4 square the other point is to make it a little bit tricky for you to play the move you want to play b5 because your knight is hanging b5 would just drop the knight so knight a5 when that knight starts to swing over there uh, okay i'm glad you're hanging out on the side of the board uh, i got plans though for my other pieces b5 and not b3 Shut it down. Shut it down. You don't want some easy attack to happen. Bishop b7. Let's trade off that beautiful bishop along diagonal. Another king's Indian attack move, y'all. Typical. You can play these moves in your sleep. It's like... <clears throat> that's called snoring. <clears throat> I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah. Knight h2. Bishop yeah, e5. Bishop h3. Yeah, let's go. h4. h5. h6. Let's go. All right? This is what this is all about right here. So takes, takes... And now the knight drops back to c6. That's two tempi lost. That's two tempi. Now that you fix your pawn structure, let's go. Knight g4. We got ideas. We got ideas. We're trying to get you to push something on this side. Please push a pawn something, something. Bishop drops back to a8 to get the open file. Why could, why has no care? You do whatever you like. You can do whatever you like. Yeah. Do whatever you like on that side. Because we are attacking. Excuse me there. Rook to b4. And now all the homies are chilling. All of them. All of them are trying to attack on this side. Like everybody is over there. All of them. And they're all going to play a part in this position. But Black Cell says, I don't see where, you know, the killer threats are. The killer threats. Queen b6. Let's try my little thing. Let me drop back. Bishop g2 because I got plans for you. Rook b2. You know, these retreating moves. I love me some good retreating moves. You know I like retreating moves. I'm just going to chill for a minute. You got your little two steps off. Now, let's go. Queen a5. Are you really attacking this pawn, Mr. Kelly? Like, really? Do you know how much Bronstein cared about that pawn? Let's get our attack going. Bishop e4. You can have the a2 pawn. Bronstein wants the h7 pawn. g6. You got to stop the attack. The attack's coming. It's just everybody's hanging out over there. Everybody. By the way. You play moves like h6. You're just asking him. Ask, like you, You're asking him to sack something. I, I don't know what he's going to sack. I don't know which one's better. It's probably the better one. Just something's going to get sacked. And queen's going to show back up on this side, come in there, and beat you silly. Beat Like if you take this one, and I check you, and then you move, and then I come over here, and I'm going to just put bonk, and I'm going to bonk, and I'm going to you get hurt. Okay? So don't touch that one. g6 instead. Queen f3. You really thought you were going to take this pawn, right? Now your knight's hanging on that square. So he comes back and defends. And that's all Bronstein needed. Didn't even want to bring the rooks into the game. That's all he needed. It's time. It is time. I'm quoting uh, Rafiki, I believe, in Lion's King. You know it is time. Here we go. Knight h6, check. King to g7. And it's time for the first of... The gangster sacrifices. Boom! Oh, oh, that hurt. Hit him and hurt him. Take on F7. Now you can't take back because give me this check. We're cashing the check. Give me your queen. I'm hitting your, your king and your queen. That's the end of that story. I know, I know it hurts, but we don't care that you're crying. So you can play a knight move. He said, well, I'll play a knight move. Now, look at this position, y'all. How many times do you see a position like this one? This knight's attacking this queen. This knight can take that and fork that queen. This knight is hanging over here. This bishop is hanging over here. What the heck? Look how many arrows I made. And now, what is white going to do? Well, there's a lot of stuff hanging. Bronstein, this is, this is the... The lightest version of what you're going to see Bronstein do. This is the simplest version. This one is nice, but it's the simplest version. But one thing I loved about Bronstein is he believed in the principle of Ronnie Simpson. Not totally, because we've seen a couple of moves that broke this principle. But when he was attacking, it was ever forward, never backward. You want my pieces? You can have them. 
This was his creative style. You want my pieces? You can take all of them. Go ahead. I'm going to mate you with something. As long as I got something left, you know, one of those guys, you chop off a leg and he's hopping and you chop off the other leg and he's got it on the arms. This is like, again, Terminator, where, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Terminator is like, you're trying to chop everything off. They almost thought they killed him. You got an arm? No, I got another arm. We're like, what? You got a, You got my other arm? I got a big head. I'm going to use my head on you. What, what you got? This is how he was. Just give the kitchen. And here he goes. You know, start with night takes. Okay, that doesn't look like a sacrifice, but actually... Uh, your knight was hanging, so let's take it. Let's take it. I still got check to your queen, so you can't touch mine. You can't touch mine. Okay. So White says, "Give me that." I mean, this is just the, the weird stuff. I'm hitting your king. I'm hitting your queen. You just about dead, son. You're just about dead. Black says, "Uh, well, give me this one." Now I'm hitting your queen. How many moves have we seen so far where one queen gets attacked, another queen gets attacked, another time a queen gets attacked, and then a counter, counter, counter attack on queens? What's up? What kind of game is this? Crazy. But the one thing we know that's not crazy is that this king is sitting pretty on G1 with a whole bunch of protection, and this king is going for the dog walk. <laughs> We're walking the dog. We're walking the dog. Let's go. Let's go. So what's the killer blow? I think a couple of people have found this. Bishop d5, check. Yes, did I tell you, Bronstein, you can have all these pieces. You, you just take all of them. I'm giving you the light version. You can have my pieces. I don't care. I'm going to mate you. That's what's going to happen. Sooner or later, you're going to get mated, okay? Of course, now Black realize it's doom and gloom because, for one thing, if you take this guy, well, these rooks will be fighting over who gets to kill him. No, I want to. I want to. No, no, it's me. It's me. One of them is going to get the choice. Well, we're going to vote for this rook since the other one already moved because of castling. So finally, this rook will get in the game. And after your drop back, that's a nice mate. Bishop and rook and pawn. We don't even need the queen. Just a pawn, a bishop and a rook mating a king like that. That's sweet. That's sweet. I'm being told that I miss rookie two for black. <laughs> You know, when you have a player move like that, you must be a computer. <laughs> Let's stop the mate. Let's just stop it for one move. Maybe the, maybe he'll miss the move. Mister, please don't take my rook. Okay, well, you're right. Let's take that. Matutski. All right, so bishop d5, check. Uh, mm. Well, you can take the bishop. And we'll just uh, grab this with check. And now that our queen has been cleaned up, you know, in positions like this, Bronstein wouldn't even want to take the queen. He'd be like, how do I mate this clown? Like, how dare he? You know, maybe I should play bishop here or something. You know, just just move the bishop out of the way. Because I I just don't like, maybe I'll play bishop d4. I don't like just taking stuff. I want to mate the guy. But then he might study it and go, yeah, it looks like there's no mate. Give me that. Game over. And continue the carnage. Knight's hanging. King is still in trouble. This game is over. Brutal. Brutal. That's like you take them outside, you know. You know what I'm talking about. You take them out in the back alley and be like, mm, 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 how dare you let me get this attack? That was vi that was uh, vicious. Vicious. Now, there's a suggestion here that maybe we can mate with CD5. <gasps> Bed Rush, I love you. I love you. That's even better. I'm just going to say that's that's too sweet. That's too sweet. You're right. You're right. You no, know, sometimes you make the logical move and then somebody says, we're not playing the logical move. You can best be sure this is what Bronstein, uh, I mean, look at this. Look at this. You want to throw in rookie too? You can do that if you like. Look at that nasty mate. Woo! Woo! Oh, we like mates like that. That's that's preferable. That's preferable. CD5 is mate. That's what, that's what he would have done. And the guy resigned. That's what. He, that's how you do. It. This is how you do it. This is this is how you do it. Okay, now I get the right tune for that. Beautiful, beautiful. That's finishes. We like to see gangster chess in the house by Mr. Brunch. I like that. Bishop D five takes take back with the pawn. With the, ooh, that's I'm a I'm gonna have to re I'm just rewinding remix. 
Love it. Love that mate. Whoa. Oh, love it. Okay. Well, that's just the beginning, y'all. We're going to go to another one. We're going to up the level. We're going to up the level. That was the basic level. Let's get wild. Let's get crazy. Bronstein again against Mr. Palmiotto. Palmiotto. Fiorentino Palmiotto. Sounds Italian to me. Well, this is going to be gangster. This is going to be gangster. Now, what did I say about Bronstein? Bronstein was the kind of guy that if he thought you were weak, especially, he just came right at you. Like, I'm just going to throw the kitchen sink. You might find moves. I'm throwing the kitchen sink. All right. So check out this game, y'all. Check out this game that Bronstein said. I'm throwing out the kitchen sink. First of all, we got the Pierce with D6 in the opening. The Austrian attack with F4. He's like, I'm coming after you. Castles. What do you think Bronson's going to do? I mean, you know, he could chill, play, you know, play logical, developing moves, you know, castle, and, and look for this. No, no, no. Bronson said, no respect. No respect. No respect. We're not going to be subtle. Gangster chess is not subtle. We're not going to be subtle. We just, boom, move your knight. Move your knight. This, yeah, it's a variation, and I like it. I'm coming to get you. That's what I'm going to do. So, you know, black plays a good move. Knight back to d7. No reason to trade. Just chill. We're going to ship at this chip at this pawn structure later. And Branchian said, h4, whatever. I'm just coming to get you. I'm just coming. I'm coming I'm with h4. I'm just... I mean, it's only a rook. It's only a rook. But we'll find other pieces later to come after you. All right? Come after you. I see you said Vichy, Vichy, could we show someone by Vichy for us? I will show it in future broadcasts because Vichy is the quietest gangster you've ever met. <laughs> Vichy plays some gangster games, y'all. Gangster, too many to count. I'm going to have to put together a compilation of gangster chess by the great players, and I'm going to have to include your man Vichy with an on and happy birthday to Vichy, or belated birthday. Uh, yes, indeed. But let's do this because... Uh, we're on Bronstein tonight. We're on Bronstein, and of course, I got to throw in one of my games because uh, it's my channel, so I get to do stuff like that. Black, though, was not impressed. Black was like, you carry out your attack. I've been told that when there's a wing attack, I break the center down, and I'm going to be fine. And it's most definitely true. It's true. You break the center, and you're going to be fine. It's this C5 recipe. Great move. Great move. I'm not saying you know Black is lost from the opening. Black is playing. Black is showing some stuff. Bronstein, no, nope, I don't care. Yeah, my center's collapsing. I heard whatever, whatever. There's only one thing I have on my mind, and it's to rip your king apart. I want to open a file and figure out how to get over there. So Black's like, mm, okay, you know, you do what you like. Give me that. Next stop is knight c6. Next stop, we're coming to get you. We're coming to get you. By the way, let's just point out, if you take the pawn back, Bing a bing a bong a bong a bong. Wait, 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 wait. I thought I was defending that. I, I can't take it with my knight because my queen's hanging. And if I try to grab the queen, oh, intermezzo, check, check. Take, give me that. Your center is gone. Your attack is gone. You're down a pawn. Why did you play chess like this? So d5. That's a great move. That's a great move. Now, this gangster attack by Bronstein is looking a little not so special. But Bronstein had only one thing on his mind again. I'm, tr I'm trying to mate this guy. <laughs> Look, you know, the, the Ziggy Zhao variation. The queen is looking to get over there. Now, you know a lot of y'all would see this and you'd be like, <laughs> okay, the guy's trying to mate me. <laughs> what, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Uh, this is dangerous. I'm, I'm not liking it. I'm not liking it. Yeah, it's, it's dangerous indeed. It is. But it's very defensible. It's very defensible. And in fact, Black had a couple of defenses. The one move that Black played, or this move, extraordinary move. This is called breaking the back of the attack. Extraordinary move, this one here. Nice move. You take this pawn, knight to f6, and Black now enters the defense of this guy, but also hitting this guy. And don't forget, this capture is not necessarily going to be made if Black is able to take like this. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but... Just saying. Remember, black has those options and this capture as well. If you take this piece off, then pawn takes. And guess who 
is being attacked. White could get attacked in this position. Black's turn to play a rookie eight, giving the king a little space to run, and also just the straight attack on the king with all kinds of chances for Black. If you mess around with this line, for example, now you're starting to feel upset. Black just develops really, really fast. And don't try to cast a lot of it because after queen e7, your two bishops are crying in a position like this one. So e4 was a really nice move. Deep, very deep. Computer-esque move, by the way. But black was okay. Black played this move. Takes on f4. That's also good. Black doesn't respect the attack. Takes. Takes. And black's ready to play a move like knight f6, defend that side of the board. No problem. So Brian, she said, let me take this pawn on f4. Let's go. Let's go. So black said, okay, I'm going to preempt your attack. And I'm going to prevent you from castling, mister. No castling for you to bring another piece into the game. So white said, well, this is what I was after. I'm just trying to... just." So just want to touch you. Just let me touch you. There's a Star Trek where Lee Merriweather, I'm going way back. Lee Merriweather played, and thank you very much, Mad Quick Chess for the love. Played, she played, in, she played on some kind of defense. Or, this is the old Star Trek, and I was watching a rerun recently. I love me some Star Trek, mind you. So Star Trek was gangster for real. Jim Kirk, gangster, gangster for sure. Anyway, all she wanted to do was touch them. If she touched you, every cell in your body exploded. Let me touch you. So they have to be like, whoa, I am for you, James Kirk. They have to get in the way whenever she's zoned in on somebody. I am for you. This is what, this is Lee Merriweather right here. This queen. Let me touch you. Let me just touch. I just want to. Thank you, T Tron D G5 uh, for the tier one sub. The next generation, the best Star Trek. I got to admit, that's my favorite as well. But Jim Kirk, he was gangster. So was John Luke Picard, by the way. At any rate, let's focus on the chess. This queen, you know how the queen is. It's always saying, let me touch. I am for you, Black King. I am for you. Please, let me just touch you. Let me just touch you. This nice, like, no, no, no. You ain't touching nobody. Stop it, you big perv. Anyway, queen A5. The other queen shows up. And now this queen is prepared to block the action. We're going to block the action. We're going we're gonna to stop this attack in its tracks. What you got? What you got? Nothing. Got them rules. Got them rules. Thank you so much for your tier one subscription. What you got? Bronstein starts to study the position. He's like, you know what? I know this is bogus. I'm down a pawn. I got an H file. This attack looks like it's bogus. I think I, I think I might have just you know like put too much in here. And his queen's about to come in the way and stop me from doing what I want to do. So what did Bronstein do here? He said, I'm, I'm not slowing down. I'm going for it. Knight g5. That's what gangsters do. That's what they do. They realize their attack is not going anywhere. They just throw more wood on the fire. Let's go. Let's go. We're going forward. You figure it all out. I'm stopping your queen from getting in on the act. Now, I will tell you that actually another move that was better doing the same thing was this very nice move. Bishop to b5. Again, blocking the queen from coming over to this side. And now, if you try to develop your pieces, now white could simply castle queen side. And I got to show you this beautiful variation. You're going to love this. If black plays bishop g4, trying to use the bishop to block as well, help out on that side, white has the most extraordinary, like really beautiful winning move. There are a couple of moves here, but you're going to like this one. This looks like it comes from outer space. This is Star Trek Ian, y'all. Bishop to c7. What? What happened? What's this about? <laughs> Bishop to what? To who? To huh? Where did that come from? Well, the point is to realize this queen has no moves. It's got to either take this bishop or play queen b4 or play b6. b6 is unacceptable because the bishop takes. So move your queen. Queen takes and then you drop knight d5. Bing, 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 bing. Hit him. Hit him and hurt him. That's a queen. That's getting rid of the knight that was protecting. Bishop c7 is na nasty. Nasty. Here, black would have to find the immediate and necessary knight to h5. Only way to keep the battle alive. Knight h5 and keep the fight. I mean, this is like, yo, people are punching in this position, by the way. Sharp stuff, crazy stuff going on here. Don't forget this bishop is lined up. This bishop is hanging. All kinds of madness would have erupted. But bishop b5 was better. Knight g5, on the other hand, 
is what he played. Bishop g4 slowing things down. Bishop d3. And now black should have continued with the move knight c6, the most active square. He chose knight to d7. Knight to d7. Here he goes. He's thinking things are okay. You know, he can survive this. And the bishop has prevented white from castle queen side. So black is in this. Black is in this, y'all. So white said, the attack's not working. This guy's defending hard. Let me castle. White had to give up all aspirations along this file. All aspirations. I'm lying. He's still thinking about mate. But this knight, this of so-and-so knight, is stopping what he wants to do. So black was playing gangster defense. Black's like, yeah, no, sorry, done. No, you're not coming nowhere. So I said, okay, I'll bring another piece into the act. And now black had to stay sharp. Black had to stay sharp and keep the lock down. A move like knight g4. Black could theoretically take this pawn. I don't trust it. But a move like knight g4, bring the other knight over and just cover up, block everybody and make sure nothing bad can happen. Instead, black played e5. Undermining his own knight, white played bishop to d2, and now black finally slipped. Again, the move knight g4 is possible. Again, a move like rook c8 would have been more prudent. Instead, queen c5 check. Bishop to e3, and now queen c6, and now Bronstein is in his creative element. He spots what he needs to do and plays bishop b5. Remember we talked about this move earlier. Bishop to b5. He wants the queen to get away because he's got plans. Queen drop back. Bishop to e2. We got plans. We got a little g4 action we're trying to put on you and trap the bishop. Black play. Bishop takes on e2. And by the way, now, Bronstein missed a killer blow. Missed a killer blow. He played a very natural move in this position, but he's... The move knight d5 was back in effect, and he missed it. I know, gangsters miss moves sometimes too. Knight d5 was in effect, y'all. This one was a killer blow because the knights on this square are going to drop. You can't keep both knights. I got the rook on this square, and I got the knight on this square. So mate is coming. Mate is coming. All right. What he did was winning anyway because... He found all the guys to gang up on this knight. Sometimes when you see a win, you just go after it. And so he tried to run. Give me that. Check him and wreck him. Give me that. And now he's got two pieces for the, for the rook. Rook d2. That's what you call a gangster wall. You're not going anywhere now. Your king is just stuck. A5, queen g7. And we got a mate threat. Don't bring your king up because of bishop g5 check and we'll mate you on this square. This is the single-minded, single-purpose attacks that Bronstein used to do. Definitely pure, get pure hard nose, like what, what we'd say is caveman chess, brutish, not subtle. I just want to kill you. Let me touch you. Let me touch you. That's all you want. All right. You're going to say, well, you know, that one was not precise. And look at the competition. We don't know this player. Maybe a good player, but it's, it's not the highest of level. But now I'm going to show you somebody. You'll be like, uh, wait, wait a minute now. How do, how do you do him dirty? And it's this game. And all you got to do is look at the name that, of the player with black right here. And you know we're talking for real. Okay, it was 1961. Wasn't quite, he didn't quite get to world championship level yet. But now you look at this and it's, yeah, this is Russian Mafia right here. No question about it. You got Bronstein playing against Boris Spassky. If y'all don't know that name, y'all just started playing chess, right? Because this is the Boris Spassky that Fisher took down after he became world champion in 69. And Fisher took him down in 72. Boris Spassky's omnipotent said, first classky, Boris Spassky. Basky, first classy. I like that. I like that rhyme. You come up with the moves quick. Sometimes I rhyme slow. Sometimes I rhyme quick. I love it. Celtic Thunder, thank you so much for subscribing at Tier 1. This game, remember we said what's, what Bronstein liked to do is just give away, just throw the kitchen sink. Watch this. Spasky thought he was slick. 
and did something that he thought was slick. It was horrible. And we're going to show it right now. We're going to show it right now. This, by the way, is a blitz game. Keep in mind that this is a blitz game. If you can play like this in blitz, woo, much respect. Check this out. We're going to go through this. A Dutch. What did I say about Bronstein? He, you know, he doesn't want to play finesse. Let's sack. Open up some lines. Come kill you. E4. F3. You want a pawn? Take a pawn. I just want some open lines near your king. Just let me touch you, please. D6. Bishop to F4. Bishop G4. So far, so good. Bishop C4. You know, if you push this pawn, expect to have weaknesses. E6. Holding it down. No problem. Castles. Knight C6. So far, so good. Spassky's no joke. He's not just going to let you beat him like that. Let me get that and play D5. Lock you up. Bishop B5. Pin him and win him if you can, but here, just pinning the knight. And now Bishop to D6. And now the move Rook A1. Remember, this is a blitz game. Look, I'm going to say the next move is ridiculous. I'm going to, it's ridiculous. I get it. The pawn is hanging. White is also thinking I can play knight takes on d5 because the pawn is pinned, clearly. So if you play knight takes back, then I'm play queen takes. I got stuff. I got stuff. I'm winning my pawn back. I've got my pawn back. My pawn's coming back somehow. Something's happening here that's going to win something back. Let's, let's do something. Now, Black had actually tried to fight with queen d7. He didn't want to see this happen. Black played a move that Spassky would not play 99 times out of 100. This is a blitz game. He thought, I can get away with this. I can get away with what he just, he thought he could get away with it. He didn't realize, or maybe he did realize it. I guess he did realize the gangster he's playing because by then, Bronstein had already played the world championship. And in this position, Black played this, I admit, horrendous. You're going to say Maurice, but that was horrendous. I know, but watch what happens. This is how gangsters punish you. King d7. He got the king off the line and he protected his pawn. No, not good. You, you shouldn't lead with your king. You know, you don't lead with the king. Like That's like leading with your face. You're a boxer and you're leading with your face. That's not a good idea, leading with your king. But yes, I agree. It's not a great move. It's a bad move. It's a terrible move. It's a terrible move. Best was just to give the pawn back with castles, y'all. Just give the pawn back. The problem is, why can't actually even just take the pawn right away? Because knight takes d4 and forky-worky, you've been forked. Hello. Particularly, this rook is dropping. So that would have been sweet. Castles, he could take your knight first. And after B takes, then take. Yeah, you're right. He got his pawn back. Spassky didn't want to give anything back. I was like, no, I'm not giving you the pawn back. That's not what I'm going to do. That's not what I'm going to do. But Black is perfectly situated here. Would have been best to just castle. Instead, he got greedy. He got greedy. Is this what they call a pog move? Like, just put my king in just my king, put my king in. I'm gonna just put, stick my king out like like Hikaru did against. No, it's the bong. It's the bong cloud. Yeah, the bong the kingy two move that you just put the king in. The, you know, I'm put my king in your face. What you gonna do? Here's my king. Go ahead. You know those boxers that it's like. Here's my chin. Hit it. Hit it. You're playing the wrong guy. You're playing the wrong guy. It might be Blitz, but this is a gangster. And we're going to see a gangster sequence right now. And it's going to be ugly. Because right now he played Bishop takes D6. C takes D6. And close your eyes if you're under 13. Because what's going to happen next? Maybe even 17. What's going? What he's going to do next? <sighs> okay, I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to say it. It's going to hurt. Okay. It's going to hurt. And it's and it's going to hurt with, uh, and it's going to, uh, and it's going to, uh. Watch this. We're going to start with the spectacular gangster. Rook takes on E6. Give me that. Give me that. Okay. You, okay, whatever. What? Give me, got it. So, what you got? I'm going to hide my king. Sorry, buddy. No, you're not. <laughs> boom! Hit him in the face. Not, you just sacked a rook. Now, you, boom! Hit him. Wow. You love double sacrifices. My, here's piece number one. Now, here's piece number two. Okay? Well, it's not really piece number two because you can't take it because I mate you on a stick. Mm, okay. Okay. Sure, you're right. I can't touch that one. Spassy said, okay, but your pieces look, you know, like they're all over the place. 
and things are hanging. So what if I take on d4? Knight takes d4. Hitting your queen with check, hitting your bishop. I'm still eyeballing this knight. What do you have? Now, before I show you that variation, I want to show you what else could have happened. Black could have tried to run. I'm going to leave. I'm leaving. Bye. Out. I'm leaving. I'm leaving on a jet plane. I don't know when I'll be back again. He's leaving. Is that Tom Jones? Man, I'm showing some old school. Weird. Okay, anyway, stuff comes in my head. Running is not going to help because guess what? Queen H5, check. You can't touch this. Pawn of G6. And Chess is raiding with a party of 1,351. Welcome to the party. Thank you so much. Indeed, this is what's up. Here you go. Man, somebody knew it was John Denver I was singing. Well, you came at a good time because we are doing some gangster chess. Let me just rewind. I want to rewind to show you what you just missed. Those of you who are watching from chess, watch this one as the gangster David Bronstein said, boom, on Barry Spassky. It is a blitz game, but we don't care. Blitz, rapid, classical, bullet. We don't care. Friendly, chilling in the basement with your boys. I don't care. Hanging with your girlfriend and playing some chess. We don't care. As long as we saw boom, sacrifice, and boom, sack again. Hit him. Hit him again. Hit him again. Open that up. You don't care. You don't want pawns in front of the king. You just want a mate on a stick. This is what's up. This is what's up. I said, somebody said Maurice played Jizza. Yeah, sure you're right. Sure you are right indeed. Jizza, you know. Wu-Tan in the building. Wu-Tan forever. Wu-Tan, the Jizza, the Rizza, ghost facing master killer. This is chess, not checkers. Chocolate, not vanilla. This is what we're doing here. We're playing tonight, y'all. So rookie six, indeed. King takes, knight takes. Boom! Hit him and hurt him. Hit him and hurt him. After knight takes on d5, uh, if you run, we got, we, we can play bishop c4, by the way. Bring another piece. Your king's going nowhere fast. If you play king to f8, trying to get off the diagonal, queen h5. That's what we're going to do anyway with the queen h5 variation. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to hit you. Just bing, bam, boom. Look at these angles. He's threatening to take, put a queen here. He's going to mate you on a stick. Rook takes might happen. Again, the queen's coming down. You are getting attacked gangster style. This is going to hurt. This is going to hurt. You can try your defenses. They're not going to work. Pure and simple. That's what's up. Matter of fact, I want to go over this line. Let's go over, where am I? I got a queen h5 check sighting. Uh, king f7. No, oh no, this is what I want to do. I want to play bishop c4, king e8, and a queen e2 check sighting. Yeah, I know, I know. You know, it's, it's the kind of thing where your feelings just might get hurt and you're not aware of it just yet. Check out this move. I want to show you all this variation. Knight e7, hit him again. Does it ever stop? Takes queen e6. Like straight up threats, y'all. Straight up threats. The threat is to take on f6 and to mate you. That's it. You're pinned from every which angle. And if you defend this way, that's dirty. That's dirty. Dirty. Angles. Angles. Ridiculous. By the way, if you play this move, since this is not mate and that's not mate, we're just going to play that mate. That's the kind of stuff we like. We like stuff like this. All right, let's get back to this because we don't want to analyze multiple and multiplicities of variations upon variations. You can check these lines yourself. We're just going to go to the move that was played. Knight takes on d4. Remember, we sacked the rook. We sacked the knight. We realized it was a sham sack. But now we're going to do it for real. Bronstein, he liked to finish games quickly. So he said, check. Knight of four check was good. Yeah, but this is better. This is just better. Check. We're hitting your knight. What's up? Spassky's looking around. Well, what's the problem? I think, I I think I'm just going to take this piece. I'm just going to take the piece. I'm not, I'm not backing up. If I back up, you're going to try to set me up and all kinds of attacks coming. My knight's hanging. No, no, no. I don't, I'm not interested. No. Forget that. 
I'm taking your piece. What do you have? So you sacked the rook. You sacked the knight. You left the knight hanging. Now what? Boom! Hit him in the face. Hit him. Punch. Hit him. Hit him again. Hit him. What? Another rook sack. <laughs> you can sack one. You can sack two. Take my rooks, please. Book by Yasser Sirwan. I think it was Minev. Nikolai Minev. Tick! Double rook sacrifice plus the knight sack. We're giving it all away. Spassky resigned because this is how gangsters do. Know what I'm saying? This is how they do. I don't know what this accent is. This is what they do. Know what I'm saying? It's like the James Cagney old school Hollywood movies. This is what they do. Now I'm Shane. I'm Shane. Boss just said we have to get rid of you. We're killing you tonight. You're dying tonight. Yeah, that's right. You're gonna re you're gonna be wearing some concrete galoshes tonight. Now I'm Shane. I'm Shane. You're going in the river. This is what I'm talking about. C4 mate. 18 moves beat Bar Spassky? Mate. Woo! You got to be gangster to do that. That was dirty. Woo! Mate with a pawn in the middle of the board. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Nasty, dirty, vicious. That's how David Bronstein was. That's the kind of guy he was. Not subtle. And I did not pick his best games, y'all. If you want to go look up David Bronstein, you've got to see his best games. He was an amazing, amazing player. And I'm showing you the frivolous stuff right now, but just the pretty, it's over, over kind of games. His classic games have been done many times, and you've got to look at his best. And when I recommend that you might not be able to sleep after you see it is Zita Bronstein, Z-I-T-A, against David Bronstein. I'm gonna leave you to enjoy that one yourselves. Just want to give you a taste of one of the OGs, gangster style, David Bronstein. <laughs>